Hello, thanks for joining us. This is the sixth session of the Seesaw Tech Integration of Success series. We are so excited to have you spending some time with us here today as this is the final session in this series. We're gonna kind of buzz through a couple things and then also get your feedback on your experience here. So thanks for hopping in today. If you've never joined us before, I'm Angela. I taught kindergarten for 15 years and I lead community here at Seesaw. I'd love for you to uh, tell me some of your experience of joining these sessions on Twitter at Mrs. Gadke. I'd be curious to hear from you. Also keep in mind today I might be asking you to hop into a Seesaw class as a student. So if you have you know maybe you open another tab when we get to that point or maybe you have your phone or a device handy that you might want to hop into. Um, you might be you might be joining as a student later in this session. And as a reminder, you can get a certificate for viewing this session. We will give a six character code normally in two three digit segments. You'll have to listen to the entire session to get that if you're watching the recording. But shout out to all my people that are watching live. You don't need to worry about it because it will come to you um, in a follow up email that should land in your inbox hopefully in about two days. So today our topic is e-learning days and home learning. You can find the slides um, here um, following this bit.ly, but you'll also get them if you've registered. So today I actually have been thinking a lot about this topic as I see many members of our community kind of sharing ways that they really like to stay connected with not only their students, but families during times when they are not at school. And I asked the question in our technology integrationist group on Facebook about what, what are people's plans? You have formal plans because here in Minnesota, where I'm at, we're gonna hop into kind of some, some things happening there, but that kind of sparked my idea. So our plan today, this is kind of gonna be a little bit of a quicker session because a lot of it is I'm hoping to get your ideas and sharing some thoughts that you have about how this might work um, where you are supporting students and families. But the plan for today is we're gonna talk a little bit about what, what am I even talking about when I say e-learning days? I'm gonna share some uh, examples of some of the language used here in Minnesota, but then I'm gonna share just a couple quick ideas and almost, I would say, things to think about as you start doing some brainstorming, and we will do a little bit of that in a Seesaw class today. And then I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek of some ready-made ideas that will be coming to your teachers, hopefully in a couple weeks, related to, to this topic, but maybe a little bit more generally, those um, connections that can take place even when students are not at school. So as always, just a reminder, if you are live, you can type in questions in the question box as well as we progress through this session. So to start with an example, so I am curious when we hop into our Seesaw class in a little bit, um, what, it, what it's like where you are at or where you teach or support learning. But in Minnesota, this is actually language um, that I've linked here to um, some information on from the Minnesota State site that de defines an e-learning day as a school day where a school offers full, day, full access to online instruction provided by students' individual teachers due to inclement weather. So of course in Minnesota, that usually means a lot of snow um, and ice and things like that, and, or really, really, really cold temperatures. Um, and included in this plan needs to be, first of all, creating a plan at, at the district and school level, but also letting families, um, giving them notice about how this will work, but also having the ability for students to have access to teachers during that day if they're actually not in school. So this is more of a very formal, you know, plan that would be created. So we, I'm just throwing this out there because I'm actually curious to learn more about those of you tuning in, if you do have formal plans in place. Um, but when I was polling and kind of asking this question um, in our group, 
a lot of people don't have a really formal plan in place. And I think this could be a really good opportunity to learn from one another in this community to see what, what could be um, some amazing plans that could be created that do involve Seesaw. So not only to fill this specific need of, you know, if you're missing school for several days, I know there's a lot of different um, weather situations or, you know, things that happen in Cal, I mean, California right now, right? And there's lots of fires that were definitely problematic. So of course we're not talking snow, but there's a lot of things that can keep um, students away from school and how can a tool like Seesaw be included or play a role in a portion of that plan. So to kind of get your, I don't know, your brain thinking about this a little bit, I'm just gonna review a couple things to keep in mind as you are thinking through this or what kind of some of these plans might look like. So the first thing is obviously access to technology at home for your students. So that is also something that at least in Minnesota is called out like what is your plan for that if students do not have access to technology at home, what, what will that look like? Now on this slide we are assuming that they do have access to technology at home. And specifically when we're talking about Seesaw, there's really two ways that they could view any sort of content that you add to the class. And I just kind of want to point out from my perspective, um, what a couple things to keep in mind. So on the left, option one, is they're just going to sign into the class app at home. So keep in mind that would be something that is different than the family app and in many cases they might not have the class app downloaded on the device or they've never actually signed in to the class app at home. So you would need to obviously think through well how do we how do we make that happen, right? Or how what 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 directions are we going to give them to do that? And we recommend if you are having students sign in to Seesaw the class at home, that's going to work best if students are using email or Google sign-in because there are, um, that is a more personalized um, situation where we know exactly who um, is accessing and signing in because they have to use their e email and password. And then on the teacher end, you need to make sure that you're turning off students can see each other's work because technically um, at home if a student is signed in, you know, and they're working at home and, you know, maybe their family is, uh, it's left logged in or something like that, that potentially might be something where student work could be viewed by someone else um, in the household if that's not, you know, signed out appropriately. Option two, they might be viewing content from the Seesaw family app. And that means that they wouldn't have to get signed into the class app at home. Um, they would just be viewing anything that the teacher sends through announcements to the, that would show up in the family app or a family signs into the account. Now, one of the benefits that I really like to highlight in this flow is that announcements are translated. And this can be really, really helpful if you're thinking about the situation where the students aren't in school, you are trying to communicate most effectively with families to try to also describe what is being asked of the student, um, that can be really, really a good feature to take advantage of via those announcements. The other thing that I would mention too is we've always suggested not sending home the class QR code. So you'll notice on the left in terms of signing into the class app, we're not suggesting you do that if you have QR code sign in. So this would be on the right, a really good solution for those of you that have classes set up with class code sign in and actually might be a great solution if you even have email Google sign in. But again, I'm trying to get your you thinking about this a little bit for how you might approach this. And the other thing to consider, too, is that activities, the actual feature of activities is only available in the class app. So a lot of times I will see teachers asking, well, how do they finish this at home for homework? Or how do they, you know, how do the parents see the activity so they can do it with their child? That is only something they can do if they're in the class app. So again, if your students are using email or Google sign in, they can get into the class um, easily if they have that app downloaded or they're going to the website. 
But keep in mind, if you're working with younger students that have class code, they will not be able to view activities. So again, have no fear. I'm going to show you a couple ideas related to that. The other thing I want to point out, if your um, school or district is really starting to think through this, is a really, really nice feature of paid Seesaw for schools is the trusted networks feature. And this is something you might not even be aware of um, existing, but what's really cool about it is that um, your admin can create a situation where the students can only, um, depending on where the student is signing into the class, it will automatically change the class settings so students can view each other's work is turned off. So that means, for example, let's say we're a fourth grade student, we are working in our classroom um, and students can see each other's work is turned on in the class because it's a really collaborative situation where students are commenting on other student work and doing all of that, but then, oh, we have an e-learning day and now I'm at home and I want to sign into my Seesaw class with my email address. When that student signs in at home, if Trusted Networks is set up, it recognizes that uh, it's not the network that is at school. So it automatically changes those class settings to turn off students can view each other's work. And again, that's just a privacy feature that is included and you can use if you do have Seesaw for school. So that again, kind of is another thing to consider or be aware of as you're potentially making or thinking through your plan. So I am a huge advocate and proponent of actually communicating and sharing via announcements. I think there's actually, it's a really, really simple flow. And I think a lot of um, things that teachers might ask students to do that maybe normally they would do via an activity um, in the classroom can easily be shared and sent via the announcement. And then you're not worrying about all the things that we mentioned of making sure students can't see each other's work is turned all all of that stuff you're just set to go they don't have to download um, a different app or anything like that so i'm actually going to play this video that i shared with um, teachers actually i think this was la about this time last year but it shows you the steps that you can take to easily make this type of communication happen so let's take a listen here Hey, Seesaw teachers, it's Angela, and I often get asked the question, how do I connect with my students if we don't have school? It's a snow day. As you can see here in Minnesota, we've got lots of schools out, or maybe it's an e-learning day, or you want to find just a fun way to connect. I'm going to show you. <laughs> Good morning, third graders. It's Mrs. Gadkey. It's a big snowstorm, so we're not at school. Don't you love to see how much Seesaw has changed with the creative tools? I was like, whoa, it's so different now. But you can see the basic flow. And what I'm, again, anything that is typed in that announcement can be translated automatically on the family end to whatever language their device is set to. So that is a huge benefit. And of course, students still have access to all of the creative tools um, via the family app as well that they can just reply with an ad photo or video or drawing um, and things like that, which I think makes it pretty slick. Now get ready, I'm excited for you to share your ideas because this is, I, I want to give you a time to, to share like, 
oh my gosh, we haven't even thought about this, or actually this is what we do, or we've tried this and this has worked great. So I am sharing the QR code right here to the Seesaw class. You are going to sign in as a student, so you can scan the QR code, or I am going to show you right now the text code. This text code is good for the next, you can see here, 59 minutes. So if you are joining via the recording, you will have to scan the code, and you can still hop into this class and see what other people have said, what they have suggested, what how they might approach something like an e-learning day. Um, and again, some of the suggestions I'm making are probably not to the level of a full-on e-learning plan, um, but they're definitely related to connecting with students and could absolutely be added to a component of an e-learning um, day plan that your school might be making. So go ahead and hop into the Seesaw class, use any of the tools, maybe you just wanna shoot a little video and tell me, is your district doing this? Is this something that your school does? What have you seen your teachers do? Have they tried this? Do you have families connected so announcements would make a lot of sense for them having access that way? And while you are getting connected, I'm actually going to shout out the first three digits to get the certificate if you're watching the recording those digits are six seven three so write that down you'll need three more that i'll share in a moment but i'm hoping people are getting um it appears like i'm offline let's just refresh this class um i'm actually going to give you just a few minutes to post something in our class and actually share your thoughts and do a little bit of reflecting and it's okay to completely say I have never heard of this, Angela. I have not thought about this. Now my head is spinning. Awesome. Um, or maybe you're going to share something that you are already doing or have something in place. If you're in the midst of creating a plan in your school or district related to e-learning days or schools that, days that you're not able to attend school, where are you at in that process? And of course, because this is a class that is very general with the student names A, B, C, D, right? Um, make sure you add a comment that actually has your, your name in it or maybe even your contact information if people um, would like to reach out to you and kind of do a little more brainstorming with you. I'm gonna play a little bit of music because I truly want you to spend just a couple minutes sharing um, what your ideas are and maybe something that you might try or think about doing or have successfully already done with um, teachers. So go, oh yay, we have one post, woo woo. So I'm gonna play a little background music, popping up my um, shadow puppet, one of my one of my favorites. So let's let's give you some time to do some work. Oh, 
All right. Well, I'm just scrolling along here. We've got all sorts of ideas coming into our class. So a couple things to note. Thanks so much for making sure you include your contact info. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be a jackpot. I love it, I love it. Um, make sure you include your contact info if you are willing to kind of extend the conversation beyond even this little seesaw class here. Um, so e-learning days, we're in the first year of 101, so e-learning day will be coming in future years. Oh, so good, we're catching people maybe at the beginning of this, right? So Skype or Zoom to connect live with students. Last year I posted directions for kids to take videos of fun they were having in the snow and post them. Stay tuned for something I'm gonna give you a sneak peek of. Um, we use another platform for older students, which allows them to hold collaborative discuss discussions online. So that is also pretty common. I've also heard that. Um, we're in the process of creating e-learning templates for K-5 students. We are creating both paper and digital options. Great idea. Families have the option of doing activities paper or digital. Our idea is to create a multi-page activity for each grade on an e-learning day as a digital option. We feel both are needed because not all families and students will be connected. We want to seesawize all of it as an option. I wonder if that's Joni sharing that idea. Um, I'm not gonna play the video, but we're gonna, we'll check back on that for sure. Um, so there are all sorts of things coming into this class. So I hope you stay connected to keep taking a peek at what is coming in here. Oh, good, good, yeah, yeah. Add your comments of your contact information. You guys are pros, you know this, awesome, awesome. Um, Yes, yes, yes. So this is hopefully, like I said, I don't have all the answers, but I do have some things to consider as you start planning um, and making this, um, thinking about this option that Seesaw can play a part in this type of communication or learning. So this I think will be a great start start to the conversation. I let, I'll let you keep adding to that and checking in the class as we progress here, because I just wanna show you a couple more things um, and preview something that we're gonna be sending your teachers. So going back into the slides here for a moment. So one of the things that we're working on is we feel that one of one of the major components of, of CESA is of course connecting those families because we know that that circle of learning is really, really powerful when it involves the family, the student and the teacher. So one of the things that is coming soon to your teachers via email, we're hoping for December 17th, um, is we just wanted to create a situation where we know that school breaks are a great time for families to enjoy extra time playing and creating and learning together. And that we know that research does shows, show that talking, reading, and trying new things at home really supports success in school. So we're providing five ideas to get you started. So we have things like build a reading fort, interview a family member to discover their best childhood, favorite childhood memory, play your favorite games, cook or bake something together, show where you go. And the idea is that they choose one of these things to experience together, and then they're sharing them what they've done back with you via Seesaw. So we are recommending that teachers use the announcement flow, and we will have um, a different component, a different you know PDF that's just for teachers that literally allows them to copy and paste some text that we have already put in put some language on that they can create an announcement for their families. They can attach the PDF. This is again, this is still in draft mode, for, so don't worry, this is not final. You are getting a sneak peek of this. Um, it is not quite polished and ready yet, but this is the idea we're going for. And again, we're really trying to make that connection that there is still a lot of learning that can take place at home in really fun, um, interactive ways that most likely families might be experiencing anyway when they are on a break from school. So we were inspired to do this because we see a lot of teachers creating similar things on their own um, on social media and sharing, which is always amazing. 
but we also wanted to save teachers time and we like to do that and make it easy for them to try something new that maybe they actually haven't thought of this before or trying trying something um, to really engage their families throughout that time that they are away so stay tuned be ready to kind of support your teachers and saying hey you know maybe I, I heard this was coming did you see this so stay tuned this will be coming again like we're saying we're hoping on December 17th we're also hoping to offer um, a couple of the resources already translated into Spanish um, that would be one of the language that is that we're starting with to have this handout also available in that language so we are gonna hop into some questions here Oh, yay. So we definitely have questions coming in. Kristen is wondering, will there be student friendly directions that come with the email to use in classroom? So great question, Kristen. So when we look back on what we are um, creating here, we really built it to be very visually. Um, oh, we're going to do polls in a minute. Really visually um, pretty clear. So this is really intended for families, but we wanted to keep the text um, to a minimum. So we've included pictures that really cue in those different activities or ideas. So hopefully that's helpful, but you'll let us know, Kristen, what you hear um, from your teachers. Jeff is wondering, does an e-learning day count as a student day or do you need to make up the day at the end of the year? Great question. So in Minnesota, and I'm not a complete and total expert, um, if you have that formal e-learning day plan created where you have to have a formal plan and you have to notify families and teachers have to be accessible and it, I believe there is an approval process of that plan as well, then yes, um, my understanding is it does actually count as a real student day. And again, that's more related to Minnesota. I don't know. Um, I don't know everything. And I, and that again is, is my interpretation. So, um, Let's see. Yes, he's saying there's lots of snow days in Maine too. Many of our students have no access to devices or services. So I think Jeff, in in this type of scenario, um, what I'm sharing here on the screen, could a lot of this, you know, most of it also can be done um, without devices or technology. So that could be something to consider as well. And shoot, I just deleted one question. So if you're like, Angela, you didn't answer my question yet put it back in there because I accidentally just deleted one. Um, but while you are formulating some more questions, I have a couple questions for you. Um, and before I go into that, I'm gonna give the next three digits of the code for the certificate. Those next three digits are six to one. You will need all six digits to get a certificate if you're just watching the recording. But guess what? Those of you live, you're covered. So Joni, thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for clarifying. She's saying, yes, e-learning is a substitute for a student day only for inclement weather in Minnesota. Yes, specifically. Thank you, Joni. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, this is actually the sixth and final um, session in this series. We started way back in July with our Tech Integration of Success series. And really, this was something that I wanted to provide for those of you really supporting um, students and teachers and give you some ideas, give you some resources, hopefully connect with those in a like position to help you out a little bit. So I wanted to kind of gauge um, your reaction if you have joined us before. So first question that's going to pop up, how beneficial to you was this six part tech integration of success series? So if you will just take a moment and click right on the screen, we are going to give you time to cast your vote. So go ahead, this will, this will help us determine is this something we should do again? Was this helpful? Um, we'll also be sending out probably um, in the next few days, we're actually going to send um, a recap of all six sessions with a bonus session as well. So keep in mind that will also be coming at you. So I know about 
30% of you listening have voted so far. So make sure you uh, let, let us know your, your thoughts. No worry. Like you're not going to hurt my feelings. If you're like, this was not beneficial. That's great. That's great info to hear. Um, or maybe it was extremely beneficial. That is also great info to hear. So go ahead and just click on the screen. Let me know what your thoughts are. And if you are finished with this, maybe you want to type in some more questions that you want to get to before we leave. I have a couple more um, questions I want to ask you, poll questions while you are here about this series and participating in this series. So thank you for taking the time to just let me know your thoughts by clicking on the screen really quickly. We're going to close this poll in just a second. All right. So let's do the next one. Um, would you join another series like this? Yes, no, I'm not sure. So go ahead and click on the screen what you are interested in. And again, I'm really talking about the entire series. Maybe this topic was like not exactly what I was looking for. Think about if you've been to other sessions, what you would, um, if you would be interested in joining another series like this. So we're giving you some time to cast your your vote here because you are live with us. All right, thanks for voting. Very helpful. I vote. I think I've got two more questions for you. Um, did you like the time of day this webinar was held? Yes, no, or I'm not sure. So when planning this, um, I had gathered some feedback in a survey um, with tech integrationists and various support um, positions saying, actually, I kind of like that it's during potentially my work day so that I'm, I'm not adding to my workload at a different time. I also know a lot of people are very, very busy and often you are running around <laughs> from classroom to classroom and meeting to meeting. So maybe you're thinking, hmm, there might be a more ideal time. So just letting us know quickly by voting would be wonderful. This has been held um, at 11 Pacific, one central, two Eastern each time that we've held it. Um, same second Wednesday of the month. All right, and one more question for you. Did this series give you useful ideas, tools, and resources to help your teachers? Yes, no, or sometimes? Thanks for. Thanks for sharing your two cents here. Look at, I've, I've saved a little to-do list, right? We're, we're doing it right now. Let's just get it done. So thanks for voting. And then we're gonna hop back into questions that people are asking, and then we'll be cruising out of here. All right. Thanks for making your choice. Very helpful. All right, so we're gonna close this poll in just a few seconds. So if you haven't voted, make sure you tap on the screen quickly here so your vote can count. Awesome. I am gonna hop back into questions because I wanna make sure that we wrap some things up for you before we say goodbye. Um, Stacy is saying, will we you redo the seminar series soon? Well, stay tuned. We'll see. I want to get feedback of what people think we should do. Um, let's see. Oh, Michelle, I love this series. I'm so sad it's ending. So I actually would love for you. Um, all the poll questions were very multiple choice, right? Uh, so it didn't give the opportunity to do just sharing your thoughts. So if you would actually either type into our Seesaw class today, if you're in there, some additional thoughts about this series um, or to elaborate on a thought, that would be amazing if you could do that. Or right now, if you wanna actually type into the question box and say, actually, I love this time because of X, Y, and Z, or shoot, I wish it wasn't the second Wednesday of the month, or it would be better if, or, could you work on doing this instead? Or maybe you like a different format. This is the time to share your ideas in the question box of this session or even in our Seesaw class, which again, 
Um, lots of people are still posting to and joining. I love it. I'm just going to be approving all of these comments so you can learn from each other and maybe reach out to each other um, and, and work together, right? Let's make, it, let's make it a little bit easier for you to figure some of this stuff out. As always, we have uh, lots of resources for your teachers for free. Um, we have PD in your PJs that teachers can check out. We also encourage you to join if you haven't yet, our Facebook group. So this is a great place to share these ideas and say like, ah, I totally don't know what, how we're gonna handle these e-learning days. Um, just think about that. I'm gonna go back to the class for a moment. Someone's asking for the code to get in. So go ahead and write down uh, that text code. It will work for the next 59 minutes or um, even take a picture of the QR code of the class if you choose to do that. Of course, this is a collaborative space meant to be um, here for you to get those ideas from those of you in like positions. All right. Um, so Stacy, let me, she's giving me a different time. Make sure you put the time zone in there too. That's really helpful. Um, a little bit of talk Andrea is saying, uh, know some more about the translation aspect. So when I was talking about translation in CESA, if you go to our help center and you just search translation, you will actually see um, some articles that show you about that or teach you a little bit more about that. But really, really briefly, any text that you add to CESA or students add, so for example, notes, comments, messages, announcements, all of that is can be automatically translated for families and vice versa. So if you have um, a Chinese speaking family, if their phone is set to Chinese, when they get that announcement, they will see a button that says see translation. They click it, it automatically translates it to Chinese. They can also type back to you in Chinese and it will come back to you and you will have the option to translate it to the language you are viewing in. So it is pretty amazing. Um, so check that out if you haven't done so yet. All right, so Jeff is in, great, great, great. Um, let's see, Kristen is sharing. I'd love to have a mini version of this presentation sent after the recordings. Yep, 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 yep. So all of these um, slides come in a follow-up email, but this series is a, little, is a little bit different than our PD and PJs because um, it is a series, so it takes place over multiple sessions. So we actually have to craft a separate email to get sent out. So sometimes people panic and say, ah, I haven't gotten the email yet because usually it comes an hour later. These will come more like two days later. <laughs> so keep an eye out for those. We will be sending those as well. Um, so Andrea, hopefully the translation is very accurate. I think we use Google Translate is how, um, it works in Seesaw, so keep that in mind. Oh yeah, so yes, so Michelle's saying, I love the session when we got time to reflect on ourselves, yes. Um, the one where you had us reflect on our work and then um, Matt from the Ditch That Textbook, yes, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you, Michelle, for your feedback. I love the specifics. Um, I love your energy and sharing that really helps us decide, is this something valuable? Is this something we completely scrap and never do again? Let us know. Um, let us know how we can make it better. What would you prefer to see? What would you, do you like a different format? All sorts of those things we are up up for consideration. Let us, let us know what you would like. Um, okay, we will also be sending out, as I mentioned, a recap of the entire series, which will basically allow you to binge watch every session again if you want to. Um, so you, that's also something you could pass on to colleagues that might be interested. So keep that in mind, that will be coming soon. So again, to recap our chat today, um, Let's be thinking about how can we make those connections when students aren't at school, maybe due to weather or maybe some other situations happening. How could Seesaw support that continued learning and communication and connection? Remember in uh, about December 17th, we're hoping to send out um, that inspiration to your teachers as well, where they could give this a try. And we've tried to make it We've tried to set it up to be really, really, really simple where it's not taking them very long to actually make this happen. 
um, with their families. And of course, feedback about this is really, really valuable. And in fact, if you want to email me, Angela at seesaw.me, and you want to just describe more of what you'd like to see or describe your experience here, I would love to hear from you as well. Um, but thank you so much for spending these six sessions with us over the last six months. Um, and we're eager to kind of see where this takes us next. But your feedback is really, really critical in, in what the next thing looks like. So please let us know. Please um, share what is happening um, on Twitter as well. I love to stay tuned with, uh, in tune with what is happening in your schools. So, very, very appreciative of the time that you are taking to spend with us and learn more and support your teachers even more and students. So thank you so much for being here today and for joining in all the sessions. And if you're thinking, oh my goodness, this is the first one I've come to, um, they are all also on our YouTube channel. So you can check that out as well. So thank you everyone, see you soon.